Hi, I'm Malcolm. And I'm Rachel. We're two Canadians living on our 39-foot mainship trawler starting an adventure of a lifetime. We invite you to follow along as we travel 6,000 miles through Canadian and U.S. waterways around America's Great Loop. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, when we have some downtime on the boat, we, we can uh, sort of tackle some of our boat projects that we have ongoing. So we thought we'd share with you today some of the things we've crossed off our list. There's uh, always a list of boat projects, and so there's always more to do, but we do have some that we can show you uh, that we've worked on recently. Yeah, and I guess what we should also do is have a little disclaimer saying, we're not professionals. Um, <laughs> we don't do this for a living, but a lot of the things that we've done, we've done with a lot of research um, to try and determine the best way to do it for us. So uh, again, perhaps we haven't done everything right, but the things that we've done, I think we're pretty happy with so far. So those are some of the things, and, and we've got a list we'll share with you. We'll just go through them um, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Today we're a little nervous because we're putting a hole in the boat. So the first project we tackled was a hatch project. And this hatch um, was put in the rear transom on the starboard side. And the reason for it, it was because we had a drainage issue. Um, the drainage is issue was causing water when it rained to pour directly into the bilge. And then the bilge pumps would go off to actually get the water out. And that's really not what should be happening. So as you'll see um, in this section, um, we put the hatch in, well, you'll see how and um, we have resolved the problem. So um, enjoy this part of the video. project is a very simple switch plate. We had for some reason two VHF radios in our lower helm. We didn't need both so we removed one and we used that space to put in a couple of switches that uh, will follow in some other projects. This is darker than I thought. So we are staining a piece of wood that's going on the lower helm because we put a new switch in for our AIS transponder, which allows other boats to see us. We have what's called a class B transponder, so it's not a commercial grade, it's formed for personal vessels. Now. Here's our switch, and we're gonna put it through here, but I'm just checking the color. Pretty good. Here goes the good side. Sit for one to three minutes. Okay. And there is our finished plate for the AIS switch. Covers up a space where a radio used to be. It looks much better. Um, the next was a black water monitor. So in other words, we have a tank where all of the waste from the uh, the toilet goes, and it has to be stored on the boat until you can pump it out. So the problem we have is that the monitor that comes with the boat no longer works. So we just don't know how much uh, we have in that black water tank. That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> so um, we, uh, we need to find a way to do it. And unfortunately, getting at that monitor is extremely difficult. So we avoided that problem and we've actually gone ahead and created uh, our own monitors. Um, and in this next section, we're gonna show you how we installed them. 
um, and hopefully it will remediate the issue we have of not knowing how much is in our black water tank. Okay, so this is our tank monitor for our black water. And we have this because the black water gauge that we have doesn't work because the, mo the sensor in the tank itself is inoperable. So we've got a microcontroller, which is an Arduino Uno, which is configured, looks a little messy, it'll be tidied up. And it has sensors that are running and will be attached to the tank. So these are actual sensors that are contactless sensors that will measure the liquid within the tank. And they'll be set in three, three areas or three levels. And then this LED, which will be mounted on top here, will actually show the level of the tank. So it'll tell you whether it's a quarter, half, or three quarters full. And then you can take whatever action you want to take. So that's what we're doing. This is a little kludgy because it's still testing and it's, like it's plugged into a laptop. But So here is a quarter. So what it's doing is sensing whether or not there's a quarter of the tank available uh, or filled. Here is half. And this now says that half the tank is filled and then you'll have full it says the whole tank is filled and you better do something about it otherwise you may have a small poop explosion <laughs> so then we're gonna now as you pump it out if i can free up that other sensor you'll see it slowly goes down you're down now below half and now you've pumped everything out and when you do that you go back to green so you even know when it's being pumped out so that's the uh that's the monitor for the black water. Isn't tank. the full, what you're saying, full is actually three quarters, so it gives you a little bit of leeway? It does give you a little bit, but we're not going to tell anybody that because if they see big red lights... We don't want them that, using that it. That should be the emergency to go and get it pumped out. Or go to an outhouse. Yeah, the problem with any black water tank is if it's overfilled, it creates pressure. And then you do get a poop geyser coming out of your uh, your pump when you open it, or your pipe when you open it. That's a problem. That's a problem. So this should allow us to easily and quickly see what our black water tank looks like. So I'm getting in the hatch below the helm. So I look really short <laughs> and I have a headlight on because in there it's kind of dark. It's also very cramped. That's why I'm the one that gets to go down. And these are the sensors we're putting on the poop tank and I'm going to go down and stick them on. So hopefully they're going to be in the right place. I've got some paper towels and clean off the side of the poop tank. It's just a bit dusty. I've got a couple of flashlights and one of the sensors has no tape so I get to use super glue. Let's hope I don't super glue my fingers to the poop tank. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's what's going on. So that right there is the poop tank and the sensor that is not working is right there and we are replacing it with a homemade version. I'm just about to tidy up all the wires, um, but you can see, let me move my flashlight. That white one at the bottom shows quarter full. The next one, it's a little bit hard to see because of that blue tape in the way. And then the one at the top shows three quarters full. This one is around the shower and how we pump out the water from a shower. When you have a shower in a boat, normally it can't just flow overboard because the shower is below the water line when you're actually having it. So the shower gets pumped into a box and that box then when a, when a certain switch goes off, it pumps it overboard. Um, that works well when you have a little check valve in there that stops the water coming back in again after it stopped pumping. Ours wasn't working so well. So we uh, we got a new one and of course we had to install it. So we'll show you just what that looks like and uh, give you some I think, real live action shots of how it actually functions when we've got it installed. Well, you are down in the shower sump. Mm -hmm. So here we have what they call a check valve, which stops the water when it gets put in here from the shower or the sink, drains into here, and then gets pumped overboard by this pump. And there's a check valve that stops the water coming back into the box. It doesn't go overboard. Because of gravity. Right. Yeah. And this check valve was in it, and you can see that there's actually... It's worn. ...sunlight, so you can actually... It doesn't close anymore like it should. And there's big tears in it. So anytime there's a tear, it lets all that water back in. And what happens is the pump just cycles. It just keeps cycling 
because it can't get the water out, which is very annoying. So now it's all fixed and it yeah. won't keep cycling. So we've got a one that actually is supposed to fit in there because this one's too big. And we've installed it and it seems to be working. So that's another thumbs up project. And that is the switch right there, right? Can you point to that? This is a switch, it floats. Yeah. So it comes up and then it turns on and then this is your pump. And here's the water that pumps out and then overboard. The next one is a valve that we installed again in the shower, but this one is in the shower itself, not in the, the sump. And this one is used to keep, to maintain the water temperature, but shut it off mid-use. And the reason we do that is uh, on a boat, we have limited water supply, fresh water supply, and we want to limit the amount of water we use in the shower. So we take a military style shower and we wash down then we turn off the shower, like most boaters do, I think, soak down, and then turn it back on again, rinse <laughs> off, and shut it off again. So that way we don't have to keep resetting the temperature of the shower uh, every time we turn it on and uh, save water that way. And if I could add, the challenge with it is those, those knobs that you use are very loose in a sense, so you're never quite sure how hot or cold it's going to be and you're always doing that little dance every time you turn it on and off. Mm -hmm. Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Which really wastes even more water. So this way you set it once, you can turn it on and off and then hopefully it saves water and you get a better shower out of it. And in addition to that, we don't even have to have it on full. We can turn the shower valve to sort of three quarters or half. So you're kind of have just like a little dribble of water coming out and really saving a lot of water that way. It also means we can have more showers. So we kind of are cleaner and we smell better. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> um, so for the other interesting part, which will lead into a different video at some other point is um, we can also have showers when we're actually at anchor or on the hook. And that's largely because we don't need to run our generator to make hot water. We can actually run our hot water from, or create hot water from our solar. So now it gives us the opportunity to conserve water, um, have good showers and uh, not waste it, but also use the power of the sun to make that hot water when we're having it. So it's, uh, it's, it's a win -win. small changes, but yeah. significant benefit yeah. for those of us that like being out on the hook for a long time. This last project is finalizing the connection of the wires for the Blackwater monitor. Um, and we also show the finishing of that uh, plate on the lower helm because we've added a couple of switches there. So you'll see that. And so that finalizes all of the projects for this video. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, and, and that, let us know if uh, there's something that uh, you'd like to see. Can't promise anything, but um, there's lots of projects uh, we were talking earlier that we've touched pretty much everything on this boat at some point. Mm -hmm. um, again, not experts, but if there is something you want to see or something that interests you or could help you, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Um, but thanks for watching and uh, we'll hopefully more projects to come if there's interest to see them. <music>